I mean, it's unbelievable. And education is the only passport for a poor man to prosperity. <clears throat> in fact, I knew that my father was he qualified for the central government services in 1952. He was the Indian Revenue Service officer, and he had no money to go to college, and he missed one year of college. And because he could be an Indian Revenue officer, he came to Bombay. And because he came to Bombay, I could be educated and I could see the enter the stock markets. So you know how important my father's education has been to me. And may God bless him. And I only wish that we have more Indians like him. But it was good to hear that despite all their efforts, the politicians and the mafia could not stop them. Especially in the states like Bihar. I don't know why I should talk to you about friends, but you no, know, this what they say: young. young India poised to fly. I think you are also young India. If India flies, everything will fly. <laughs> young, old. No, but I don't think of the whole earth a person like me. If only all you were young, what will happen to us? Anyway, I mean, I don't know whether I should tell you something about my life and then about what I feel about India. You know, I. My father was in government service. I was the younger sibling, and my dad always was a very democratic, but a very socialist father, and I was a very capitalist character. So we used to argue so much that there was a rule that if I and my dad talk on the dining table, then my mother won't have dinner that day. So he always inspired freedom. I was a very curious child, and he always respected and fulfilled my curiosity. I think that was the greatest source of my knowledge and learning. I didn't know he was interested in stocks, so his friends would come in the evening and they would go to drink, discuss markets, and I would listen. And I would say, you know, the 10th century, Tata Steel, Gujarat State Fertilizer, these were Grassim, these were the blue chip companies, and they would discuss them, and the price would go up and down. So, you know, at that age of 13, 14, some wanted to be pilots, some wanted to be journalists. All boys are interested in girls. But I was interested in the stock market. So I should keep questioning my dad. And my dad said, see, some news will come out, grass him and how the price will fluctuate. So I started reading the newspaper, started following stock prices. You know, there was a, a publication by the ILO where they wanted labor or, you know, people to understand balance sheet, how to read a balance sheet. They gave me that book. And then I start reading balance sheets. And then he said, Rakesh, you don't want what you want to in life, but you become a chartered accountant. He said, why? Because I asked him, he said, it'll help you if you want to go to the stock market. And also, it gives you security in life. So I, I obeyed him, I did my chartered accountancy. I also become a shattered accountant. But we're all shattered by the time we are charters. <laughs> you work for three years at 60, 80, 100 rupees a month. Of course, and you know, Mr. Bansi Mehta, he wouldn't even give us tea, we had to pay for the tea. But we had a lot of So See, for actual conveyance cost was 80 rupees, we had to make it 150. And Mr. Kule used to do 10 rupees TDS and give us the 70 extra, which we used to use to have drinks four times a month. The great fun I never forget. And then I did my charter currency and my dad said, What will you do? I said, I want to go to the stock market. He said, I know that. What will you do there? I said, I'll invest. He said, Where's the money? Don't do this, I'll do this. Never ever you know, put your palms before my face. So I said, but he said, don't worry. I have a house in Bombay. You can always live here. You're a smart fellow. If you don't succeed in the markets, you can earn 15, 20,000 a month. And he said, never forget the word is a bond. Be fearless. May God bless you. For he's the only blessing. So I went to the market in 5,000 rupees. I should stand there. If I tell anybody in the stock market, my father is from the stock income tax department, they would talk to me only then. So they used to ask me what's the guy. I said he is doing some top business in multi data market. I used to tell people. So that brother was a practicing child accountant and he managed to get me a loan of 15, 20 lakhs of rupees from his clients. And then we started. The same I earned 25 lakhs in the first year of my Never before in the what? In the first year of my life in the stock market. In 85. A true approach. 85 mid 86. And then for three, four years, there's no money. No earning, markets were deeply bearish. I never used to speculate, never used to short share or, or buy long. And I got married. But luckily I used to stay with my parents. 
so I had no expenses. My father used to pay for the household. Luckily, also my wife was a very mild lady. She used to have her own car, but we used to go by bus. She lived in an AC room from the age of three. We had no ACs, right? But then, what to do? But then, eighty eight, eighty nine, you know, things really started moving up. There was a budget of Madhu Dhanwate. Everybody was you know, in eighty nine. I asked my dad for capital. So he said, "I told him, Daddy, the stock is issuing cards for twelve lakhs." You give me twelve lakhs. I need money for office, and I have working capital. I can raise the working capital. I need money for an office, which I'll buy from my money. And you give me a year's time, then I'll repay you these twelve lakhs. In the next three years, like a truck driver repays, you know, five percent installments. So my father said, "No, I won't give it." But then I told him, "Daddy, the time your son, you brought me to the earth. I have done nothing wrong, <laughs> right?" And I told him something else also. I said, "I was the fourth." Maybe I was born with the tip of the FL was stone. I told my dad, "Well, I felt it's my right that I have done. I've been in the stock market for three years. I won fifteen twenty lakhs of rupees. I've done nothing wrong." But he said, "No." Then I said, "I have right." He said, "You have right in ancestral wealth, and when your grandfather died, he left no wealth." <laughs> he told me, but he never interfered in what. Then I told him that he never worry about me financially. And I said the only way I can raise capital is by trading and speculating. There was no other way. You know, there was a share called Sisa Goa. There was one Mr. Bajaj in the stock market. You know, we would catch everybody on the road and Sisa Goa, Sisa Goa, Sisa Goa. And nobody would listen to it. But when he explained to me, I found it to be very attractive. Was I know prices at that time Brazil was the main supplier to Japan, and I know prices for the next year are decided in advance. So it gave a 36 percent increase for the next. Year. Right, and I bought a lot of shares, and I bought between twenty-seven and thirty. And the stock was seventy-five rupees in a year. Then I bought Telco. That also went up. And then the budget of Madhu Dhanwate. Everybody was so bearish, so bearish. And see how education helps. And the people started talking that they will levy a tax on education, which means that if your child goes to cathedral school, he will have to pay hundred rupees a month to the government. But I thought of it: how many private schools there are? And for, after all, education is a state subject. The government will the, the government will have to amend the constitution in order to collect this tax. It was a minority government, so that's all crap. People have got sorry, people have got uh, extremely bearish. And I stake my life. I mean, I was worth two two and a half crores on the day of the budget, and next day I was worth twenty crores. And then the market. I just take my life that day, and then the market went up. The You know, it went to the index went to nine hundred. Then the Gulf War happened, and somebody wrote that, you know, as the Lal Street, all the markets in the world had gone down except India. So Economist magazine wrote an article that the Lal Street heard of Saddam Hussein. I remember. And then after the Gulf War, we had the crisis, and then Madhu Dhan Bhatti came, then Manmohan Singh came, and after his fresh, but you know, index just shot up to twenty five, twenty seven hundred. Then Mr. Ashut Mehta came. And then you know, we made solid money in the rise. We made solid money in the fall. And I think 1993, my net worth must have been around 150 crores. And I went and told my dad that Daddy, I've earned a lot of money. I, I 90, I told him that I've earned about 20 crores, 25 crores rupees in trading. I don't mind paying the tax. Tax was 40-45 percent. How do I pay the wealth tax? If I have a 25, 30 crore portfolio, I have to pay one and a half crores wealth tax, which means I have to sell three crores worth of shares. Pay one and a half crores tax on that gain, and then pay one and a half crores wealth tax. So my dad said, "Why are you so disturbed? Give me the income and the portfolio. I pay the tax. I am worried about paying the tax." He said, "Don't worry about paying. Give everything to me. I'll be happy to pay the tax and keep the rest." Yeah. And you know, '93 to say '99-2000 was a very listless period, and. Uh, You should do nothing. They had banned speculation. The NSC came. You know, electronic trading started. You know, we used to go to the ring on the day of the bomb or the bomb blast in the Bombay Stock Exchange. I was in the ring. I used to go to the ring every day, 12 to 2. And then, of course, the tech boom came in, which I didn't make much money because I don't know about technology and I didn't realize the importance of software. Let me not be afraid to say how ignorant I was or I am. But I didn't know what software meant here. Yeah. We used to use a computer, and then of course, to came two thousand one two, when the 
I mean, it's all one after the September and education is the only for passport. seven days. I never stepped out of my bedroom for a poor man. I used to eat there, use my toilet, wash TV. That's all I used to do. But then I thought, maybe four thousand Americans dying, it's not going to change the world. I mean, the way the kind of crisis, and also I realized there's a lot of, you know, the liberalisation program in '91. It has taken a lot of time for corporate India to exist, and corporate India then had a lot of unutilised capacity. And you know, how do you make a bottom when the worst circumstances arise? If the market hits a bottom and then rebounds back, so you know, we went to from 3300 to 2900 on September 11, and cut the amount. And I thought, you know, you know, ten years India was a growing economy, no gro- no growth in the market. So I got extremely bullish, and I raised, you know, normally I used to. Uh, you know, I have a debt five, two, four, five percent of my portfolio. I took a debt. I remember a three hundred seventy-five crore portfolio. I had around fifty crores of debt. And the biggest bet I had was on public sector enterprise. Bharat Bank Technologies was available at twenty-five rupees, and Bemil was available at twenty rupees, and Bemil went to fifteen hundred, and you know, Bharat Bank Technologies went to sixteen hundred. So Bharat Bank kind of gave us, he gave me far more money than I needed. So I'm just. A person who has been right person at the right place with the right attitude, and it's not that I've done anything which is extraordinary. Uh, finally, I in- invest out of informed ignorance. Let me not think that you know I invest in a hotel, I invest in a jewelry company, I invest in a watch company, I invest in a pharma company, I invest in a bank, I invest in so many. I invest in a tractor manufacturing company, I invest in a casino company. I mean, at least twenty-five, thirty kinds of business in which I have serious investments, and I don't understand all of it. So you know, like in your CA, you have to make accounts from incomplete information. We have to invest from incomplete information. And often listed companies are such strict guidelines from CB. So God has been kind, and I, I think, you know, the best is yet to come. And I was watching some of my YouTube videos. Uh, And I saw in 2003 August when the market was in the worst crisis. In an interview, I said the mother of all bull markets is still ahead of us. In December 2013, I said the bull market is already starting. It will only be confirmed when the index goes above 600 here. So we are in a bull market. And why am I so bullish? I have made at least 20% of my wealth by being bearish. The kind of money I made in '92 after short selling shares, because we knew this money is coming from. God knows where it's coming from. It's not legitimate. And once the weakness started, just slaughtered the market in that. So the question is, why am I bullish? See, essentially, earnings valuations are slave of earnings, right? Now, for you know, eighty percent of corporate India, India is the market, and also for the wherever we are in the export markets. India share in the export markets is very very small. We still haven't touched more than forty to forty five percent of the Fortune five hundred companies in software export. Wherever we in pharma, we don't constitute more than fifteen seventeen percent of the US generic. Or you know, I think India is going to be a world leader in pharma one day, because we have a huge home market, and the Indian costs are just unbelievable how low they are. So, why will India grow? Essentially, you know, it's it's in a very very I would say powered economy where corporate earnings don't grow if the economy grows. I know, like, you know, in America, a lot of the sales come from international operations, so that may not be so linked. But in India, if India has to grow, corporate India's earnings have to grow. And why India will grow? I think. See, what allows a country or an economy to grow? Even my investment, I don't look. First, I look at the factors which drive profit. Opportunity, competitive ability. Similarly, for India, I think Indians are among the most skilled people in the world, and those skills are only not with the NRA. Indians are genetically skilled. We did not steal the technology from anybody to make the bomb, right? And we did not sell it to it. I think we have in India some of the most skilled doctors, lawyers, software engineers. So I have no doubt in my mind that India is a, Indians are. And India is a skilled nation. Then I think if you look at if you look at history, 
no country which is non democratic has become prosperous and retained it for 100 years i'm not talking of city states like singapore they don't matter you will give me bombay again make bombay very prosperous right so i think democracy slows but makes things sure then you know every society has its highest growth in the most favorable time of its demographic evolution see these are not opinion these are facts go to america you go to europe today the biggest challenge for the western world is demographics and from you know from 2010 to 2050 india will be having the most favorable demographics of any sizable nation in the world one in every fourth indian a fun of one in every fourth person joining the workforce in the world will be in india i think one in every fourth person below the age of 25 lives in india for the world then i think we have vast natural resources you know we struck oil in rajasthan it's you know saudi arabia an oil field which is producing 1 billion hour barrels of oil for 50 years a day is produced you know god can't be so unkind that he gives so much oil in the <laughs> Deserts of Saudi Arabia and not in Rajasthan. It's you no, know, it's. I mean, it's plain common. It's just, you know, it's, we just have to find it, for which we got to have a balanced, and a fair allocation of resources, auctioning, proper systems. I think all this in all these oil fields, the best system is what percentage of oil you are giving. You know your cost. You are going to give ten percent oil found, twenty percent, thirty percent, forty percent. That is the way it should be done. That it will be done. Also, I feel the modern world is about the ability to understand change, accept it, prepare for it, and benefit from it. And for that, you need modern minds. I think India is essentially culturally a tolerant society which can change. That's why I think we are so proficient in in software and engineering. So I think these factors are not man created or designed. They are all been created by circumstances, and they are all bottoms up, and nothing can reverse them. And if these factors cannot be reversed, now it has to come together with good evolved government policy. We are very hopeful. I, I won't. I mean, good people may have a lot of opinion of good and bad. At least it facilitates the ability of Indian people to grow their and to grow their skills and talent and economic act. I am confident this government will do that. So I think you are going to have a boost of growth. I think post 2017, 18, 1819, if India doesn't grow double digit, I'll be deeply disappointed. I think we will, and we'll go that we'll go double digit for a far greater period, greater period of time than how China has grown. Right. So if corporate, if India has to grow, then corporate earnings have to grow. If corporate, if the corporate earnings are a slave of valuation. Price is a simple formula. It's equal to earning per share multiplied by P. If the earning per share goes up, when corporate profits go up, right? Now the P. You imagine you live in a country with six hundred fifty billion dollars of savings. Not six billion comes to the stock market. In four years, this will be one trillion dollars. In America, thirty percent comes. In India, in two thousand seven eight, I think eight percent came. In ninety two ninety three. So it was fourteen percent. If ten percent of this money, which is hundred billion dollars, is going to come in the market, I don't know what's going to happen. And me advising and you lecturing, nobody is going to come. Some nafe ka daru hai. Jaise bazaar badega, pehle chachi aayegi, fir chacha aayega, fir wo apni girlfriend ko bolega ga dek, maine kitna paisa kamaya share bazaar mein. Fir wo aayegi, fir wo apne dost ko bolegi, and then nothing, you know. These animal spirits will never die. So I don't think you know we should advise people too much where to invest. But they will come. If markets go up, they will come. So I remain a total India bull. A lot of people ask me why don't you invest abroad? You diversify. I say, well, the food at home is so good. Why do you go to some restaurant? <laughs> yeah. I remember when I used to buy public sector stocks. You know, NDTV. The first interview person who interviewed me live was NDTV. At the first time they gave me an executive class ticket to come to Delhi. First time in my life I travelled in executive class, right? And I can't forget the chicken jets they were serving me on the flight. I was a complete foodie, so he asked me, 
राकेश राकेश यू आर वेरी पुलिस इन द पब्लिक सेक्टर स्टॉक्स बट द एफ आई आर नॉट बाइंग हाउ इज द गो आई शेड डोंट वरी इफ द सूटर इज इफ द गर्ल इज पिटी द सूटर विल कम सो माई ऑब्जर्वेशन इन लाइफ इज द रियालिटी इज दैट इंडिया इज गोइंग टू ग्रो यू मेट डन गो डबल रिजन एट परसेंट इज एनफ राइट मल पीपल आर गोइंग टू कम इंटू द मार्केट्स मोस्ट गुड स्क्रिप्ट टूडे आर एटिंग एफ आई लिमिट लॉ ऑफ बीबल लॉ ऑफ एफ आई थिंग लेट्स बाई दिस गुड कंपनी बिफोर डेट इट्स द लिमिट एंड देन लोकल मनी आई डोंट नो यर आई मीन विल आस्क मी विल इट बी वन लैक आई सेड वॉट निफ्टी और सेंसेक्स यू आर सिंग सेंसेक्स आई से यू आर टू बेरिश I said only thing I don't know when. Just like daddy na, daddy sab paisa do do bolu. Beta sab tere hi hai. Kab tere ka baalu ni. Right. So I am very bullish. As far as I think all of you are concerned, I am very jealous and envious of all of you all, young Indians. Right. That you know you will love to see a far more prosperous India than I will live to see. So exciting to be young. You can have girlfriends. You can go pubbing. You don't have a wife to question you. What time you're coming home? Where are you going? Right? Or you don't have a husband to question you. Whatever. Right? And it's great to be youthful. And I wish. You no, know, I still. That's when I think in the office sometimes. No, generally I don't have much to do. So I watch the screen. Right? And I I don't meet. I have arranged matters in such a way that I'm free all the time. Right? So I was thinking the other day. I said. Would it be better if I can be 25 again? Go to the stock market. I have a bag. I had no office, so I used to stand on the street. They used to call me bag wala junior wala. So why he carries a bag? He doesn't. No. So great. I think you have to have great future. And I mean, I think one thing is that I just met the promoter of Jebong. I think we need to aspire. If we don't aspire, we'll not achieve. We need to dream. But I think we need to dream with our head held high and our feet on the ground. You know, dreaming in an abstraction means nothing. What else I can say? That there is. I mean, I would advise all of you all. To, it's it is better to try and fail rather than to not try again. And also, the elements of you know, all things like big in life start small. Never forget. And of course, I don't think you all must all be either in own businesses or in jobs and all. But I feel that, you know, you when we once we get educated and all, you feel this conflict where I go in life, how small I am in relation to the world. But as time progresses, the progress surprises. As far as you said, I'm a philanthropist. I'm not a philanthropist, but I do believe. I don't consider myself a philanthropist. To do that, I have to give far more of my wealth. Right? But I only give 25 percent of my dividend income every year. But I feel that see, the giver of this wealth is God. I am not Rakesh Jhumala because I am Rakesh Jhumala. I am Rakesh Jhumala because He has chosen me to be Rakesh Jhumala, and I have not got to well. <laughs> and I have not got you know the God is a giver of this wealth. I think He casts upon us a social responsibility that we must use some part of it for good purpose. And I am very influenced by you know John Rockefeller first by my dad. When I first, you know, my dad came to know I'm a billionaire. I tell you two jokes about the joke about the billionaire part. I came to be in Forbes magazine. He called me. He said, "Sare toh itna paisa hai mere. Five thousand crore. I thought so much that I got also five thousand crore." He told me very success, very happy. He said, "I feel." He said, "Use it for good purpose." But I said, "Rakesh, I'm very sorry. 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 और दो करोड़ डोनेट करने को बोलता हूं तो मुंह बनाते हैं यू नो दैट्स टोल्ड मी हियर एंड देन यू नो द मार्केट फेल ऑफ एंड माय वेल्थ हाफ सो लॉट ऑफ पीपल टू टीज मी इन शॉर्ट्स मी आर यू स्टिल अ बिलियनर आर यू स्टिल अ बिलियनर आई सेड यस वेरी मच सो मेनी टाइम्स आई हैव आई डोंट नो इन व्हिच करेंसी स्टॉप इट I think I even mean, also, so I decided, you know, that giver is God. I pray to God give me the power to give. I also think now that I'm 54 that 
what is the legacy I leave to the world? See, I have no business, individual business or an organization. I have 14 employees in my company, right? And there is, I am very bad at administration. I cannot build organizations. I don't intend building organizations also. So let me realize what I can't do and not try and do it. Right, I had a big dream that you know, I get their enterprise, I get 30 traders, I'll get 40 traders, we'll trade, we'll invest. I think always it's impractical of individualistic character, right? So will the legacy be the only the wealth I leave to my children or the good I do to society? So I now do, I spend 25% of my dividend income. This year I'll spend between 22 and 25 crores. And I've pledged that on July 5th, 2020, I'll be 60. So 5,000 crores or 25% of my portfolio. Whichever is less, I will give it to my friend. So that that can be... It's a pledge, it cannot be legally enforced, but a lot of people tell me, why do you say it? I said, I say it because on 6th July 2020, if I don't give it, you come to my office and say, shame, 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 shame. You know, that pledge now is reinforced that I must do it. And I, if, if possible, and like the wife agrees, because I have only one customer and client, my wife. And a lot of my friends who manage money publicly, they always say, Rakesh, we envy you. You don't have to answer anybody. Our clients, they take our hours one month, they shout. The value goes down five. I said, boss, you have one set of one, mine is daily. Yeah. <laughs> I have only one customer. Don't forget to like and subscribe.